Hello everyone, welcome back once again in our YouTube channel. My name is Krishna Rai and today in this video I am going to explain you how to do interfacing of 7 segment module with STM32 Nucleo code and I am going to use bare metal programming language. If you are watching this video first time, I will request go and watch my previous video. In my previous video I have explained what is a bare metal programming and how to start with that. So let's begin. So as we are going to uh, learn about 7 segments, so first let me show the pinout of 7 segment and uh, let me explain you a little bit about that. So this is a 7 segment LED and actually it is compact of 7 LEDs and that LED are actually inbuilt in a manner. So you can see here A, B, C. So basically A is a one LED, B is another LED, C is another LED. So like that there are seven LEDs which are compact on a board and this board is called seven segment module. So you can see A. So for each LED there is a specific pin. For A you can see the pin number is seven. For B the pin number is six. And then for 4 the pin number is C. For C pin number is 4 and for D pin number is 2. So like that for every LED there is a specific pins and also there are two common pins. So there are two kind of 7 segment uh, modules available. One is called common anode and another is called common cathode. So the one which I am going to show in this video I will be using common cathode. So in common cathode what happens, these 8 number pin and 3 number pin will be ground. So that's what happens in common cathode. Cathode means negative. It means 3rd number pin and 8 number pin you have to make it ground. And in order to glow the 7 segment, for rest all of the pins you have to provide positive voltage then it will glow. And in case of common anode, it will be completely reversed like 8 and 3rd number will, uh, will be positive and other spin will be negative and then only it will glow. So first thing is before going to interface things first we have to learn a hex code of 7 segment cathode things. So these 7 LEDs A, B, C, D, F, G there are 7 LEDs as I told you. So let's say you want to display 0 number. So for 0, here uh, we have a 7 segment module, for printing 0 only G should be turned off. G should be turned off and rest all of the LED should turn on. So here you can see G is 0 and others all LEDs from A to F are high. So what is the hex code of this? So hex code we will just divide 4 4 bit. Here you can see what is the value of this 1 1 1 1 it's F and what is the value of 0 double 1 it's 3 right 3 means 11 and double 1 double 1 means F so the hex code is 3F for displaying the 0 number on 7 segment as it is for printing let's say you want to display 1 because we are going to make a counter which is start from 0 and all the way it will go till 9. So what is the value of 1? Let's see want to print a 1 on this. So which LED should be high? B and C will be high and A, F, G, E, D all will be low. And same things you can see here. G, F, E, D all are low and C, D is high and C is high. Not sorry. C is high and B is high. Even A is low. So same things. Whatever uh, you want to display on the 7 segment, you just need to uh, turn on that LED and the LED which is not uh, required for that number, you can turn off that and you need to make a hex code of uh, 0 to 9th number. So I have noted all the hex code. I hope you understood till here. So I will explain one more number like 9. Let's say you want to display 9 here. So for 9, A should be on, B should be on, D should be on, F should be on, C should be on, D should be on. Except E, every LED should be on, on the 7 segment. So same thing you can see here, except D, every LEDs are on and the last 4 bit is F 
and this 110 is 6. Now we are going to make a connection. First we'll do the connection and then we'll start the programming thing. So the connection I have used port C, GPIO C for the 7 segment. So I have connected PC0 to A and PC1 to B. So basically this is the connection. You can actually take a look of the connection and like this you have to do the connection. I am using a nuclear board F446R. Now I am going to explain the programming thing. So let me open STM32 cube ID. So let me open file and let me create a new file of STM32. Okay, so here we go. Now first thing is we have to select the board. So I am using nucleo board. So I will just write nucleo and the part number is F446R2. I will just select this and then I have to do next. I will select this and then I will do next. So let's give a name to our code. Seven segment display. And we are going to use a bare metal programming. So we'll select empty and I'll just do finish. So we have created the project. Now we have to go inside source folder and I will just go inside main.c. I'll just click on this and main.c is open now. Let me just delete this. This is not required. Floating error. Okay, so now let's start the coding things. So as I told, we are going to use we are going to use GPIO C board. So first, we have to note down the base addresses of all the ports, whatever is relevant for this activity. So let me open the reference manual, then we'll start the coding things. So first, let's check the boundary addresses of GPIO C port. For that. I have to go inside memory and bus uh, architecture and inside the memory organization. Here, memory map registers and boundary addresses. So, what is the base address of GPIO C? The so GPIO C base address is this one. So, we have to note down this base address as well as we are going to use RCC, which is clock control. So, we need this register clock control also. So we have to note down this base address and GPIO C base addresses. These two base addresses are actually required for this. And inside uh, GPIO C, we are going to use something. First, let's note down the address of RCC. So for that, I will just take the data type UN32 and then, then we need to specify your type qualifier. So I will just write volatile on the, the base address. Let's give a name RCC. Now we have to do type casting. So U N 32 P and then we need this also. So this is called type casting because we are going to assign a address to this variable. So what is the address of that? So 0 x 4 double 0 2 then 0 8 double 0. Let me check once again. Yes. 0x4002 3800 3800 so 3800 and it's done so we have actually noted the base address of rcc now we need we need some more addresses gpioc now we have to go inside gpioc port and we have to check what things we have to enable and also we have to first check where RCC bus is hanging. So RCC bus actually hanging on AHB1 bus. So first we have to enable the clock from AHB ENR clock peripheral. In my previous video, I have already explained where all the peripherals are hanging on different different buses. I am requesting you to please watch my previous video in order to get to know on which bus the peripherals are hanging. I'll first go inside RCC peripheral reset and clock control and then we have to go inside AHB, AHB1 ENR bus. So HB1 ENR clock peripheral clock enable peripheral yes 
so we have to enable the clock of this GPIOC. So this will be one and others two will be zero. So we can actually send four to this address. And what is the offset value of this? The offset value of this is 0x30. So this offset we have to add in RCC registers base address. So base address of RCC is this one and we have to add 30. So it will become this is the final address. The base address dot here actually we have to add in plot variable. So the RCC base address is 0x4002 but the base addresses we have to add with the offset value. So I have added the offset value and it becomes 4002-3830. So this is the final RCC base address, including offset value. Now we will go inside GPIOC and we have to check what registers are required to assign these pins as an output. So we will go inside the GPIO registers. I'll just open GPIO registers and then first register is border register. So this GPIO border register is used to assign a pin as input, as input and as output. So for input, you can see here for using a pin as an input, we have to do 00, 0 of these motor pin. And then for output, we have to write 0, 01. So we are going to use seven pins we are going to use pc0 pc1 pc2 pc3 pc4 pc5 pc6 and for each pin there are two things you can see for in motor 0 there are two bit in motor 1 also there are two bit so first thing is what is the offset of this one the offset of motor register is 0 0 so this offset we have to add in gpio c so GPIOC base address, let's see the GPIOC base addresses. Uh, GPIOC base addresses, we can check in memory map registers, boundary addresses. The GPIOC base addresses, this one. So this, I will just note down here. Let me do copy again, copy, and then I will note down here, yeah. So noted. And this is the motor register. So I will just write GPIOC motor register because the motor register offset value is 00. So there will be no change in GPIOC base address. It will be same. Now we need other also other registers. So let me open GPIO registers. Yes, so motor register offset is 00. This register is required to set a pin as input or as output. Now we need one more register which is output data register. So we have to note down the address offset value of that output data register. So we need to send, we need to write on the pin. So we need this register and the offset of this is 0x1. So this offset we have to add in GPIO C base address. So let me copy this again and then I will just paste it. So at the end we have to add the offset so it will become 1 4. Now till here everything is done. Till here we are ready actually. Now the first thing is we have to enable the clock of GPIOC. So GPIOC how to enable the clock for enabling the clock because the GPIOC peripheral is hanging on AHB1 ENR bus. AHB1 bus. So let me open the reference manual and I will just go to AHB1 ENR clock enable peripheral HB1 here. So HB1 ENR clock enable peripheral and we have to enable GPIO C. For that we have to send one on pin number two. How to do that? So I'll just copy RCC base addresses. Here I will copy this and with top pointer and then I will just send 4. 4 means 100 which will enable the GPIO C. This is done. Now, now what we have to do? We have to actually enable the motor register and from the motor register we have to select the pins. So let me open the GPIO registers. 
DPIO registers are here and in the motor register. This is very important. In the motor registers, we are going to use motor 0, motor 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way from 0 to 6. Because motor 0 is like PC0, motor 1 is PC1, PC2, PC3, PC4, PC5, PC6, like that. For output, the value will be 13 will be 0, 12 will be 1, 11 will be 0, 10 will be 1, 9 will be 0, 8 will be 1, 7 will be 0, 6 will be 1, 5 will be 0, 4 will be 1, 3 will be 0, 2 will be 1, 1 will be 0 and 0 will be 1. So what is the hex value of that? So 1, 0, 1, 0. So this is 5 and here also this will be 5 so 5 5 and this also 5 and this one will be 1 so we have to at least send we have to set so let me copy the murder register i'll just copy from here i'll paste here with pointer and then i'll just set it so we have to send 1 5 5 5 so this is a hex value so 0x 1555 5, 5, and we have to send from 0 pin so we have actually before setting first thing is we we should always clear the bit so i'll clear the bit so for clearing these all pins we have to make it high so 1111 1, 1, 1 means f and this is also f this will also F and this will be F so before that before setting first thing is let's clear the bit whatever pin we are going to use let's clear all of them so for clearing we can actually send F F F F start from 0 bit this will clear all the bits and now from 0 to 15th bit will become 0 now again let me copy this and this time we have to set the bit as we have discussed for setting we will do OR operation and here we have to send 1 triple 5 starting from 0 this is also done motor register done now we have to come inside the while loop and inside while we have to write the code now we need odr registers so actually this gpio c we have to change and we have to make it g odr odr means output data register because we have added the offset of output data register so this becomes odr address now we have to send the data on the pin so for that we need this pointer p odr equal to and we have not noted the segment so first let's note the segment integer segment and the segment size is 10 and then we have to note the hex value of all the pins so let me open the 7 segment here so we have to note these hex value for 7 segment 0x 3f 06 so 0x 3f and then 0x 06 then 0x 5p 0x 5p and then 4f 6660 4f 6660 then we need 70 077 f 70 0, 7, 7, F. and then last one is 6 F. so 0 x 6 F. so this is done so we have noted all the x value for the 7 segment is starting from 0 to 9 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 we have noted the x value of that now this is the array we have to send this array i before that we have to create a for loop so let me create a for loop integer i equal to 0 and then i is less than equal to 
9 and then i plus plus and this will come inside this loop and also we have to create a delay function so let me create or we can just create here also for integer j equal to 0 start from 0 and then j is less than equal to 10 lakh this is a software delay i'm just going to put one so i have put it a software delay here and then this is done so our program is ready let me compile that so before compiling i'll just go and i'll just clean the project i'll just clean it so i'll just clean the project and then let's start now let me now let me bit up here you can see and there are few errors in the program done so it's done let me now debug that i'll just click here and then we have to select the workspace and then okay and now let me open this again main.c and if i just click on run started printing on mine but it's changing very fast so i'll just increase the delay and then i will debug again now i'll resume from here